right. Well, Victor, thank you for uh, um, joining us and uh, looking forward to seeing you in person later on in the year in Amsterdam at Network X. Obviously, you lead Azure for operators at Microsoft. If my uh, memory is correct, by the time we meet in Amsterdam, Azure for operators will be two years old, uh, which in technology terms is, is quite substantial. Um, and it would be interesting to know from you um, what are your key milestones and key learnings over the past uh, couple of years so far. Sure. Thank you for uh, for you know talking to me and asking these questions. So I think um, uh, yes, uh, in it from a technology perspective, two years is a long time, but uh, this is a technology that has been around. Uh, this kind of technology has been around for you know decades, and and so we are sort of revamping and redoing uh, how it, you know, how people operate and how operate our operators operate this thing. So we have announced a few things. We announced uh, some in uh, Mobile World Congress uh, and then uh, earlier before that too. And effectively, uh, the current announcements have to do with products that we got when we acquired two companies, Affirmed and uh, Metaswitch. And Affirmed was the number one, uh, uh, had a number one product in terms of the core 5G network. Um, and they have, uh, you know, other companies signed up. at t for example, uses their thing. And MetaSwitch is a company that's 40 year, more than 40 year old company, which is uh, that's networking and protocols. And so we acquired a lot of voice uh, protocols from them uh, that that telcos care about. So we turned them into products. And then in addition to that, we also announced uh, private mech, which is a multi-access edge computing, and. Um, we have also said that we are working on public Mac. Uh, and then in addition, we have also uh, started a new product project which should be coming to to the market soon. Uh, it's called AODS or Azure for Operators Distributed Services. The idea of that is that, uh, you know, you, when you buy all these servers and stuff, they, you get raw metal and then uh, how you install uh, software on it automatically uh, with a click of buttons and then uh, make it possible for network functions to operate uh, in that setting. And so AODS does all of that, uh, brings in as the power of Azure, brings in the management uh, traits of Azure, and uh, allows uh, people to put network functions on it. In, in, and so that should be announced for public uh, uh, soon. Hopefully, you know, by the time you you guys, uh, oh, Network X comes around. Fantastic. And in terms of uh, milestones or, or let's say memorable achievements from a customer point of view. Uh, what, what do you think is so far is making you, let's say the proudest, or do you think is the, is the greatest accomplishment uh, for them? Yeah, so uh, let me uh, ask, let me try to answer your question, but slightly differently than the way you probably expected. So, you know, one of the things that, uh, one has to realize is that there's a lot of excitement here, of course. Uh, there's a lot of money uh, here as well, uh, because essentially what is happening is you've got two massive industries uh, coming together. So you have the uh, the telcos, uh, you know, well established, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars of uh, money. And then you have the IT industry, sort of the Microsofts of the world and, you know, Googles and Amazon and all these other companies of the world. And we sort of bring them together. And so that is a process. So in the sense that just because you sort of say it doesn't make it happen. You know, when the rubber hits the road, it's it's a very different beast because you're actually asking somebody to sort of take a bet on something that they haven't done that before. I mean, they have they are very used to the operator market, the telecommunication market is very used to working with certain incumbents, certain ways of doing things. And uh, now you have this other industry. The reason to bring these two industries together is very straightforward. I mean, the two industries are doing very similar things, and uh, the cost for developing these networks and putting them down is in multiple, you know, billions of dollars uh, that uh, both actually have to do. So, and and so, for example, in the cloud industry, we have to move packets all across the world. We've got uh, 165,000, 170,000 miles of fiber interconnecting 62 regions of our data centers around the world. Now that's a lot of fiber. 
and we have lots of capacity. And then you've got the telecommunication guys also doing something similar. Uh, and so, you know, what what's the purpose of that? I mean, you might as well do just one. We, we have ways of monetizing our network. They have ways, but uh, uh, so the idea is to bring it together. So when you ask about milestones and you know what are we proud of, I think the the thing to be to uh, as I reflect back on this, you know, we had this sort of vision of doing this so many many years ago, and and it hasn't gone away because you know so, so what I mean by that is that some ideas come and then you know people get excited and kind of go away but this one is persisting and uh, more and more it's slow from a from a sort of looking from outside in and sort of like you know why are they taking so long but it's a very massive undertaking on both sides uh you know we have you know thousands of engineers working on this on the software and then you've got this massive industry and and so there has to be a a, a unit of trust and i think that trust is increasing and uh, we are starting to see, uh, you know, the operators talk to us about things that, you know, we we think the way it should be, and and asking us the right questions, and sort of like demanding the right thing. And I think that is that is interesting. That keeps me going. Um, you know, I give you a very long answer, but I, I had to. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> make it Probably that. you're right. I think I think my question has a, had a fault in a, in it because we're talking about mainly software, which doesn't have milestones. It's a continuous uh, release. Uh, so, so, um, but um, you mentioned that w w we have two in incredibly large industries getting together. We are, you mentioned that we are talking about billions uh, of, of dollars being invested both in connectivity. So we're talking about fiber, we're talking about uh, 5G yeah. and soon 6G. Um, and of course, we're talking about cloud and edge. Uh, so as these two industries get together, you coming from a Microsoft, so you coming from, from the so-called internet world, so you coming from the uh, cloud world, uh, and as you, even with your acquisitions, as you start kind of interconnecting or, or, or merging with the telecom industry from a physical or from a from an infrastructure point of view, um, what what are your key learnings or, or what kind of tips you feel like giving to like the executives in the telecom industry of things they should be aware of things they should be thinking about things they should not be doing um or they should be doing differently right so uh, <clears throat> this is a lot, big question and has a you know, there's a there's a lot of answers let me just start with uh, something uh, sort of uh, close to uh, hot cloud work. So so one thing to understand with the with the movement of the two industries together is scale. So you know they the telecoms operate at, at a large scale, but so does the cloud. And cloud in fact uh, the one thing to for for everybody the operators to think about is that you know, we've gone through a very similar journey. So let me explain from a Microsoft perspective. You know, we were a shrink wrap company. You would go buy something, some software for $99 from, some, you know, one of the electronic store, brought it, loaded up, and you had an operating system, and you had, then you had Office. And so we made the transition to cloud. And in that, and that was painful because, uh, you know, initially we just sort of went with uh, you know incumbents who knew a, a way of doing certain things and they kind of sold us this hardware and things and uh, we we discovered that uh, that it was this transition from a particular type of business or, or a particular style of doing business to another style can be painful but we have learned a lot in the process we have learned uh, to become um, very dexterous, very, very good at this. So, so for example, uh, you know, we are able to, like you said in the, early in the comments about software being uh, sort of fluid. The the advantage of software, I think, is it makes the systems a little bit future proof. And so, so you know, every time we go from one G to another G, it takes ten to twelve years, and the reason is the infrastructure cost is just, you know, just enormous. Now, if you sort of think about like beyond five G and six G, you start to think about. Well, I mean, if you can get only IQ samples from the radio waves, then and everything is done in software, then you know you are actually headed towards a software switch, and that can be a lot more cheaper. So the things to remember for operators is that 
not only will the uh, will this transition or the movement towards softwareization of the telco network or the cloudification in some sense will reduce uh, their capex uh, future capex uh, but it'll also reduce their opex because the same tools that have been built for cloud can be applied in the operators regime very very well and we can go into details on that later if you want uh, but then the other thing is that the revenue can go up as well and so they they should start they should start thinking about not just the capex and opex but also how we can increase our revenues and what i mean by increasing our revenues is that the cloud companies have done this really well i mean so when we say you know we spend a lot of money in the network the network monetization comes not from selling the network but all the services that sit on top of the network and so that's the same kind of a model that you know telcos should be considering which is that as they embrace edge as they embrace cloud what are the developer uh, you know what are the big applications that can come Along, what are the developer ecosystem that can come along? What is the programming interface to these things? Uh, and how do we sort of monetize it beyond the communication part of it by this application? So that would be that would be a thing to uh, keep in mind as you deal with it. And so, you know, again, uh, speaking just on behalf of Microsoft and from Microsoft, you know, Microsoft actually has that. Like it has a very, very healthy developer ecosystem, has a way to attract them, has many of the top applications that you talk about for 5G that are in-house. <laughs> Sorry, because yeah. I have to interrupt you. And so, for instance, do you see this developer ecosystem at some point to start developing, let's say, for AT and T directly, or for uh, Vodafone, or or just to name some? Uh, yes. Do you think these the, developer, these like companies, are, are going to attract your ecosystem or yes, 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 totally. Like we are spending a lot of time and energy with one of some of the best engineers on the programmability of the network. You know, you, you hear about slices, for example, network slices, but you've got to think beyond the network slicing in the sense of like, OK, so the slicing can be done, but who is using it and how is it being used? What is the programming API? What what applications? So that's and so we are building all that developer ecosystem on our edges and our cloud, and the edge is also going to do the infrastructure piece. So the answer is yes, we have actually done some proof of concepts. Uh, deployments with AT&T in Atlanta it was just done recently with video analytics where they sort of looked at it. We have been talking to other companies like Singtel. We've been talking to um, uh, Telefonica. A lot of these companies uh, are absolutely, uh, you know, yes. So the answer is yes, the developer ecosystem, we are building it so that more and more developers can actually write uh, applications that are all these latency sensitive applications that we've talked about. Victor, on that point, uh, sometimes, often we talk to uh, telecom operators and they, they tell us at Omdia when we do our research is like there are several um, partnering opportunities out there. We need to prioritize, we need to select. And yeah. what's the best way? Um, probably this is the chance for you to, to pitch <laughs> Microsoft as well. Uh, how? how uh, what was the most convincing argument you have to start with you rather than others? Yeah, so uh, I would say, uh, you know, Microsoft's, Microsoft is, I think, the second biggest cloud company, you know, and Amazon being the first. And so our scale is very, very large, you know, millions of servers, and we manage that on a day to day basis, and it's always up. So Microsoft has all the elements that one would need. The edge computing thing started from us, and you know we've been investing in that very heavily. In 2017, Satya announced a ten five billion dollar investment in IoT and and uh, and edge. So we've got all of that. We've got, um, as I said, a very a vastly uh, very vast wide array networks. We have um, all the developer ecosystem I just talked about. Uh, we have all the applications from HoloLens to Teams to video analytics to um, gaming, cloud gaming. These are sort of some of the applications that we talk about. And, uh, and, and so we have like all the pieces of the puzzle in one place. And uh, we put our might behind it. So, you know, we are not like we've already invested, uh, you know, more than two billion uh, in in bringing in engineers to work on this. And you know we are in here for the long term. We are not going to go away and we are not going to sort of like, you know, we are going to. So I think that um, this is, uh, you know, uh, the operators need to feel safe. They need to feel secure and uh, they can feel safe and secure. And we will take care of things like security. You know, this is brought up again and again. And so, you know, we have invested, you know, uh, again, billions of dollars in security and 
are considered one of the top uh, company in the world in terms of uh, trustworthy computing, privacy, security. Uh, we know how to deal with regulators. So we have the package is very complete. It's a very, very complete package. And 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 we have a Microsoft Research, and which is where I came from, and it's the top research institute in the world, and it's got you know thousand researchers working on all kinds of uh, things that that we are bringing. In fact, my own move to to the product group was based on a lot of the work that we had done many years ago that we are bringing uh, bringing in and uh, improving. So so you're future proof, that, and you will have the best your know, brains working for you. You know, so yeah, I think the package is just very, very complete. Very good. And and Victor, you just mentioned research, and um, and we we just be talking about edge computing. If I'm correct, you were already researching and publishing papers about what we could have called edge computing back in 2008. Am I correct? Yeah, that's correct. That is correct. So yeah, that was the first paper written on the topic. Yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, that's very long time ago. Many many yeah. in the many in the industry probably didn't even think about cloud back then. Um, so, and that makes me curious about what is in your horizon today. What things we should be aware of? That's a you know, it's a, it's a tough one, a tough question to answer because. Um, I am excited about certain things, and I'll tell you about those. But I just sort of wanted to reflect uh, that you know the way the edge computing came about was um, we were we started we had started down the path of cloud computing, and then the question was <clears throat> what happens beyond the cloud. And then we knew that in cloud we were selling storage and uh, computes, uh, but we also wanted to sell latency, and you know there was no way to sort of fix the internet, so. We kind of like conceived of the edge computing way to do the the, the latency part of it, and uh, uh, it's been yeah it's been amazingly successful. <clears throat> so so these ideas come uh, every uh, so often, but uh, let me try a little bit. Uh, so one of the things that I started in 2014 um, was uh, was uh, video analytics, and the idea there was. Really, it was started from a perspective of showing the money. So they were like uh, technical people who would say that, you know, edge is not really necessary because the cloud is going to be within 20, 25, 30 milliseconds of every uh, person, you know, in a major part of the uh, economies of the world. And so why do we need an edge? And so, you know, there was so there was back and forth discussion and all that. So I sort of thought that the only way to sort of like prove to them that it is important is to actually bring up, uh, come up with some some something that can't be done otherwise, or you know, it's going to be. So I started working on video analytics in 2014. So it's been eight years since we've been working on that, and and people talk about video and things. I do think that what we are, what you're going to see is, I mean, the cameras. There are statistics that show cameras are everywhere, and you know, people are watching, and you know, but there is no uh, way to. Uh, do real time stuff like there's a very little way to do real time stuff. So you've got these machine learning and AI, you know, evolving and becoming better and better with the models. And then you've got, uh, you know, cameras becoming better. You've got the networks becoming better. You've got the computes uh, now available to you. So this all sort of comes together in a way that you can build control systems with these eyes in some sense. Now it feels a little dangerous because you know things like oh people, you know this privacy preserving things or you know you know everybody's watching but but that's sort of like you know one part of it and you know we need to control that and we actually have like privacy protecting systems but we can also use it for uh, efficiencies in ways that we haven't even conceived or thought or thought about yet. And so I think that is a pretty major, uh, major thing. Now, video analytics will be incorporated into HoloLens or you know into uh, into AR VR systems a lot better. Uh, so that'll be a part of it. It'll get incorporated into gaming as well. So you know that is another big thing. And then it'll get incorporated into many things. Robotics, for example, you know uh, retails, you know where robots are moving things around and you're controlling them from somewhere far. You need to do analytics there as well because. In order to scale things up, you got to have machines, you know, uh, helping out in the process. You can't have humans, every one human connected to, you know, a few cameras. So that's that's a sort of a, a big thing that we're doing, uh, or, or you know, I believe will will really uh, take off. And um, um, yeah, there's more. <laughs> but... <laughs> Come on, give us one more. One more. Okay, so. Uh, let me pick uh, uh, pick from uh, um, uh, something. Uh, 
So, um, you know, again, uh, this is a little bit dealing with video, but it's more so 3D or holo holographics. I think that, you know, we have systems in Microsoft Research where you've seen the thing is you've seen these things in movies, but you haven't seen them in real life. So, for example, if you think about Star Wars and if you think about the, the Jedi Council, they show this thing where a few people are sitting and then their holograms of other people are sitting and they're pretty far away. So uh, we, we, we know how to do that. It's very expensive <laughs> right now. But I think that meeting the shape of meetings like the way we are having now is going to change. We will get out of the 2D metrics that we are doing right now and it'll be a lot more 3D part. Of course, you need uh, your latency has to be great. Bandwidth has to be great. And, uh, you know, you have to have uh, right now a bunch of cameras and things of that nature. But but I think that's uh, that's something that will uh, that'll happen too. just because there is money there like this. You know, businesses are interested in that and that'll that'll have a significant I mean like for example COVID already had a significant impact on travel I think uh, things are changing you and I are still talking and that's good I and mean, things have become better this was this was a smooth uh, thing between the two of us it's going to get smoother with that as well and um, I think that'll be uh, big and used pretty much everywhere uh, that you are um, for sure. and that should be I'm looking forward to that, and it's uh, fascinating just the thought of it. Um, but closer to to our uh, um, imminent future, um, what what are what things are you looking forward <laughs> coming to to Network X? So back yeah. going back into Amsterdam, November, <clears throat> you're joining us uh, probably on stage and certainly meeting lots of people. Uh, what what things are you really looking forward to talking about or finding out? Right. So so I think Network X is uh, you know I um, I joined it because I uh, I thought there was something unique about about it and um, you know interesting. So one of the uh, things that I am looking forward to is um, uh, they're very smart people who come and give talks. Uh, and uh, you know their panels and talks and things, and I think I, I kind of want to uh, understand, learn and understand their perspective on things. Uh, on um, just like you're asking me to get my perspective, I actually want to learn their perspective because that actually helps me make more informed decisions, both in terms of the kinds of products we might want to build, but also in terms of shaping the business strategy of things. So that's like a, a big thing. I think that. Um, um, I, I hope to uh, also uh, not just listen, but uh, create connections because uh, what I what I've also discovered in life, uh, uh, you know, being in industry for more than 30 years now uh, and uh, actually uh, close to yeah, quite a quite a bit uh, is that um, uh, trust is an important element and trust comes from knowing one another. It's the black box things where like oh, you think of Microsoft as a company or you know, that's a little bit sort of like uh, uh, it creates walls of the kinds that can easily be removed by just talking about it. Like you know, uh, like I, I constantly hear, "What do the telcos? What do what do the IT know about five nine availabilities?" You know that kind of thing they'll say, and then there's no sort of a <laughs> response to that. So so by making connections with some of the decision makers, making connections with some of the influencers, making connections and sort of understanding, you know, what may be the issues that they are feeling with and then being able to answer those issues right away or later is something that I think would be very, very valuable in Network X. And, and their forward looking agenda is also very, very interesting to me because it's not about solving the problems today, which which we are, which we will, but it is also like, where is all this going? Is this investment worth it? And so, you know, that is the part that I'm most looking forward to. Like Likewise, Victor, I enjoy talking to you on camera, but I'm looking forward to shaking hands with you and uh, getting the real person. Me too. Not that you're Me not too. real now. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know what you mean. Yeah. Fantastic.